Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. Depending on where you are in this world, God bless you. This is Gloria White coming to you from Utah, USA. Today we're going to go to the book of Joel. It's another prophetic book. i got to get this little thing off my arm. It's annoying. Um, so we're going to read Joel. It's only a couple sh chapters long, but here we go. The word of the Lord that came to Joel, the son of Pethuel, Pethuel. Hear this, ye old men, and give ear, all ye inhabitants of the land. Hath this been in your days, or even in the days of your fathers? Tell ye your children of it, and let your children tell their children, and their children another generation. That which the palmer worm hath left, hath the locust eaten. And that which the locust hath eaten, hath left, hath the canker worm eaten. And that which the canker worm hath left, hath the caterpillar eaten. Awake, ye drunkards, and weep, and howl, all ye drinkers of wine, because of the new wine for it is cut off from your mouth. For a nation is come up upon my land, strong and without number, whose teeth are the teeth of a lion, and he hath the cheek teeth of a great lion, and hath laid my vine waste, and barked my fig tree. Bark is like stripped it. He hath made it clean bare, and cast it away. The branches thereof are made white. When you take the outer bark off, it's made white. Lament like a virgin girded with sackcloth for the husband of her youth. In other words, mourn. The meat offering and the drink offering is cut off from the house of the Lord. The priest, the Lord's ministers, mourn the field is wasted and this field being wasted is ruined the land mourneth for the corn or the grain is ruined or wasted the new wine is dried up or fails the oil languisheth now of course the the wine is coming from the 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 vine vineyard and the oil comes from the olive trees. Be ye ashamed, O ye husbandmen. These are the farmers. Howl, O ye vine dresser, for the wheat and for the barley, because the harvest of the field is perished. Famine. There's no food. The vine is dried up, and the fig tree languisheth. Now this languisheth means has withered the pomegranate tree the palm tree also and the apple tree even all the trees of the field are withered because joy is withered away from the sons of men it can be hard times no one's going to be very happy gird yourselves and lament ye priest howl ye ministers of the altar or this is whale. Come, lie all night in sackcloth, ye ministers of my God, for the meat offering, or the grain, or meal, and the drink offering is withholden from the house of your God. It's withheld. Sanctify ye a fast. Call a fast. Consecrate a fast, call a, psalm, a, a solemn assembly, gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land into the house of the Lord your God, and cry unto the Lord. Alas for the day, for the day of the Lord is at hand. When is the day of the Lord? It's the millennium. And as a destruction from the Almighty shall it come. It is not the meat cut off before our eyes. 
is not, it's asking a question, is not the meat or food cut off before our eyes, yea, joy and gladness from the house of our God. The seed is rotten under their clods or shrivels up. The garners are laid wait, desolate. Now that's the storehouses. They're just empty. And we can see here in America that our storehouses are empty. And that our brilliant um, leader, um, potato leader, Chip, potato Chip, is actually sending or selling our grain to China, who has been stockpiling grain for the last two years. 60% of the world's grain has gone to China. Okay, verse 17. So, so the seed is rotten under their clods in, in the field. They planted them, and there's the dirt is just big clumps of hard dirt. There's no rain. There's no moisture. The garners are laid waste, or the storehouses. The barns are broken down, for the corn is withered, the grain. How do the beasts groan? They're hungry. They're thirsty. There's no food. There's no water. The herds of cattle are perplexed. They're restless. Because they have no pasture, yea, the flocks of sheep are made desolate or suffer punishment. O Lord, to thee will I cry, for the fire hath devoured the pastures of the wilderness. The wilderness is burned, and the flame hath burned all the trees of the field. The beasts of the field cry also under thee, and the rivers of waters are dried up. And the fire devoureth, the fire hath devoured the pastures of the wilderness. The, the wildlife has nothing to eat. The deer and the moose and the antelope, the wild goats. There's no food in the wilderness because all the grass is um, burned up. Chapter 2. Blow ye the trumpet, or the ram's horn in Zion. And sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the Lord cometh. For it is nigh at hand. A day of darkness and of gloominess. A day of clouds and of thick darkness. As the morning spread upon the mountains. A great people and a strong. There hath not been ever the like. Neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. A fire devoureth before them, and behind them a flame burneth. The land is as the garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness. In other words, they're just trodden it down. They're turning it into just wasteland. Yea, and nothing shall escape them. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses and as horsemen. And this horseman is, um, or swift steeds. So shall they run. Verse 5. Like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains shall they leap. Like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth the stubble as a strong people set in battle array. Before their face the people shall be much pained. All faces shall gather blackness. And, and what would that be from? Smoke, of course. You know, smoke and ash. And they shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like men of war. And they shall march every one on his ways and they shall not break their ranks. Neither shall one thrust another. They shall walk every one in his own path. And when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. They shall run to and fro in the city. They shall run upon the wall. 
They shall climb up upon the houses. They shall enter in at the windows like a thief. The earth shall quake before them. The heavens shall tremble. The sun and the moon shall be dark, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. Sounds like something out of Revelation, huh? Let's see. That it will be in Psalms 18:7. We can reference that. And actually, it's in Isaiah chapter 13, verse 10, and Isaiah chapter 34, and verse 4. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army, for his camp is very great, for he is strong that executeth his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible, and who can abide it? Therefore also now, saith the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart, and with fasting, and with weeping, and with mourning, and rend, or tear your heart, and not your garments, and turn unto the Lord your God. And, and so this is return, return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, or loving kindness, and repenteth him of the evil, or he relents from doing harm. Who knoweth if he will return? And this return is if he will turn and relent, and leave a blessing behind him, even a meat offering, or a meal, or grain, and a drink offering unto the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet or the ram's horn in Zion. Sanctify a fast. Call a solemn assembly. Assembly. Gather the people. Sanctify the congregation. Assemble the elders. Gather the children and those that suck the breast. Let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. Let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, Weep between the porch and the altar, and let them say, Spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thine heritage to reproach, that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, Where is their God? When, when, then will the Lord be jealous for his land and pity his people. Yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil, and ye shall be satisfied therewith, and I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen. But I will remove far off from you the northern army and will drive him into a land barren and desolate, and with his face toward the east sea, and his hinder part toward the utmost sea, and his stink shall come up, and his ill savor shall come up, because he hath done great things. Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. He's going to come in, he's going to step in and defend Israel. The Lord's going to step in. This is the end times, people. These are the things that's going to be happening. This is when he takes the um, the um, rush, Russia, and he hooks him in the jaw, and he draws him in toward battle with Jerusalem. But the people, when they turn to God, he's going to turn back to them. So be not afraid, ye beasts of the field, for the pastures of wilderness do spring. God can restore. For the tree beareth her fruit, the fig tree and the vineyard, the vine do yield their strength. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month, where when we first started reason, reading, we could see that it was a famine, a, a drought, 
causing the famine and the destroying um, locusts and cankerworm and palmer worm and, and, and everything, uh, all the, the worms that eat up all the food. So the pestilence. And the floors shall be full of wheat and the fats shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. And just like he sent Nebuchadnezzar, here he's going to use Rush and, and Turkey and, and um, East Germany and um, Ethiopia and Iran, which is Persia. He's going to use all these people. He's going to draw them in to battle against Israel. But then he's going to step in and defend them. He's setting them up. And ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of your Lord, the Lord your God that hath dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord your God and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Now this is a very um, notable verse here in Joel chapter 2 verse 28. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood. Now, what did Jesus say in Matthew 24? When you see these things, let's go there. Matthew 24. Do, do, 24. Mm -hmm. Okay, I just have to find it. I'm looking for it. I don't know why. Sometimes it's weird, but I look at the scripture and it just looks like Greek or something. Like a language I can't read. It's just strange how sometimes it just looks that way to me. Verse 29 in Matthew 24. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, the ram's horn, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds and one end of heaven to the other. Now learn the parable of the fig tree. And it says, Verily I say unto you, This generation shall not pass away Till all these things be fulfilled, heaven and earth shall pass away, and my, but my words shall not pass away. But of the day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. And as in the days of Noah, 
when everybody was just going about their life, but the world was full of such wickedness. That it, and when we read in Revelation, it talks about the cup getting fuller and fuller of God's indignation. Uh, and it's going to be poured out. Oh, it's going to be bad. Um, for in the days that there were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them away. So shall the coming of the son of man be. So in the days of Noah, God told Noah what was going to happen and told him to build the ark. And Noah kept trying to warn the people to turn to God and repent. They didn't listen until the flood started. The rain, it started raining. But God closed the door to the ark and nobody could get in. And so they were all lost. It's going to be the same way as when the ten virgins, five of them are wise and five are foolish. The five wise ones go into the wedding supper and the door is closed as in the days of Noah. Okay. And knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the son of man be. Therefore be ready. For in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man cometh. Who then is the faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord hath made his made ruler over his household, to give them meat in due season? Blessed is the servant, when whom his Lord, when he cometh, find him so doing. In other words, you remain faithful. You remain dedicated to the Lord. You remain Un, you're not going to turn to Satan and fall down and worship Satan. You're not going to take the mark of the beast, that brand. You're not going to. He's going to come and find you as a virgin. And that means that you have not joined yourself to Satan, that you're still pure and holy undefiled that's what he's going to be looking for when he comes so don't get tired and give up and get and, and just go you know what i need a drink i need about five drinks i need about 10 drinks you know don't let him come and find you drunken because lord help you if he comes and finds you not doing what you're supposed to be doing to be a, a disciple of his. So let's go back to Joel. The verse 28, then verse 29. And also upon the servant and upon the handmaids, in those days will I pour out my spirit. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood, before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass, whoa, that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance or salvation, as the Lord hath said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. Chapter 3. For behold, in those days and in that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Ju Judah and Jerusalem. He's going to bring all the Jews from all around the world. He's going to bring them back to Israel. We've been seeing this. So many, so many Jews have left Ukraine. So many Jews have left Russia and have returned to Israel. There's even been fundraisers to help pay for their flights to fly them back to Israel. 
For behold, in those days and in that time, when I shall bring again the captivity or the captives of Judah and Jerusalem, and I will also gather all nations and bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat, and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land divided up the land where they keep saying oh you know give this part of israel away we we want the two state israel the two states you've heard this you've seen this in the news over and over and over and so whom they have scattered among the nations and parted or divided my land and they have cast lots for my people, and have given a boy for an harlot, and sold a girl for wine that they might drink. Yea, and what have ye to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon, and all the coast of Palestine? And this Palestine translates into, um, verse 4, is Philistia. Will ye render me a, re a recompense? Will you retaliate against me? And if ye recompense me, swiftly and speedily will I return your recompense upon your own head. You think so? Well, come on. Well, let's just see how that goes. God's telling them. <laughs> That's not going to be a very good idea. Because I'm going to put it right back on you so fast, you won't know what hit you. Because ye have taken my silver and my gold, and have carried it into your temples, my goodly pleasant things. The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem ye have sold unto the Grecians, that ye might remove them afar from their border. Behold, I will raise them up out of the place whither ye have sold them, and will return your recompense upon your own head. And I will sell your sons and your daughters into the hands of the children of Judah, and they shall sell them to the Sabaeans, to a people far off, for the Lord hath spoken it. Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles, which are these are the heathen, the ones that have not turned to God. Prepare war, wake up the mighty men, let all the men of the war draw near, let them come up, beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears, let the weak say, I am strong. Assemble yourselves and, all, and come, all ye heathen, and gather yourselves together round about, thither cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord. Let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat, the hook in their jaw. For there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. Put in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. This goes into Revelation. And come get you down, for the press is full, and the vats overflow, for their wickedness is great. And this is... um. You can find it in Revelation 14, verses, verse 15. And then we go on in verse 14 here. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. And the sun and the moon shall be darkened. And the stars shall withdraw their shining. Now that can be... Um, we found that in uh, over in Revel in in um, Matthew, but we can also find that in Revelation. So, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. The Lord also shall roar out of Zion, utter His voice from Jerusalem, and the heavens and the earth shall shake. But the Lord will be the hope of His people, and the strength of the children of Israel. So shall ye know that I am the Lord your God, dwelling in Zion, my holy mountain. Then shall Jerusalem be holy, 
and there shall no strangers pass through her anymore because he's going to be there and it's not going to be allowed. And it shall come to pass in that day that the mountains shall drop down new wine and the hills shall flow with milk and all the rivers of Judah shall flow with waters and a fountain shall come forth of the house of the Lord and shall water the valley of Chittim. Now remember the um, water that flows from the, the throne? That's what this is. Egypt shall be a desolation and Edom shall be a desolate wilderness for the violence against the children of Judah because they have shed innocent blood in their, in their land. But Judah shall dwell forever and Jerusalem from generation to generation for I will cleanse their blood that I have not cleansed for the Lord dwelleth in Zion. And if we go back over here to, um, well, let's see, um, verse 13, put ye in the sickle for the harvest is ripe. Come get you down for the press is full and the vats overflow for their wickedness is great. And that's, we can go to revelation 14 verse 15. I keep telling you guys, the Bible is woven together like this beautiful tapestry. It all fits together. It's all tied in one, one incident to another. It's just, it's all here. Verse, uh, chapter 14, verse 15. And another angel came out of the temple crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud. Thrust in thy sickle and reap, for the time is come for thee, for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. Now, this is where God, when he comes, you know, Jesus, his vesture is dripping in blood. This is because he's going to take the wicked out of the world first, and he's going to put them in the vine press, and the blood is going to be up to the to, to the bridle of the horses. And that's why Jesus' vesture, his robe, when we see him coming, is going to be dripping in blood. A lot of people think it's his blood, but it's not his blood. It's all the wicked's blood where he's put them in the wine press. Because it's if we go on and, and, and read... In verse 18, and another angel came out from the altar, which had power over fire and cried with a loud voice to him that had a sharp sickle, saying, thrust in thy sharp sickle and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, for her grapes are fully ripe. And the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth and gathered the vine of the earth and cast it in the great winepress of the wrath of God. And the winepress was trodden without the city, and blood came out of the winepress, even unto the horse bridles, by the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs, which is nine hundred and sixty nine thousand six hundred feet. So we see that Joel is tied into Revelation, right? And we also know that it's tied in in other places. It's in, in Ezekiel. It's tied into in Ezekiel. It's tied into Isaiah. It's tied into Zechariah. I mean, it's all woven together. It's so beautiful. One piece backs up another piece. Another piece gives more light and understanding to another piece over here. And, and so it just keeps coming together until it all fits together and makes this beautiful tapestry of words God. It's his love letter to us. He He's showing us the history of what, when man acts a certain way, he warns man not to act that way. By the prophets, he tells him, he rises up early in the morning and sends the prophets and starts telling them, and they ignored the prophets, and they killed the prophets, and the blood of the prophets is, is spilt. 
they're the ones under the altar saying, How long, Lord, before thou, holy and true, come and avenge our blood on them on the earth? And, and he answers them and says, he gives them white robes and palms, and he says, wait just a little season till your feather fellow servants are killed in the same manner, martyred for the word of God. It's, it's, it's amazing. It, the book is just amazing. I wish more of you would spend more time, you know, studying. And I'm so glad you come to listen and, and, and to learn and understand and to get more uh, uh, information about how God is working things out, how his purpose is being, you know, um, fulfilled, how he's using people, different people, different um, nations, powers in different parts of the world to accomplish his will. Just like he's going to bring Russia and Persia and all of these countries against Israel. And then he's going to stand up and fight for Israel. America and Britain and Canada and Australia. They're, we're all just going to be standing by watching this. We're not going to be involved. God can handle this. He He's told us. I'm going to take care of this. You want to throw your stuff at me? Watch how quick I put it back on your head. You're, 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 you're going to be very surprised how quickly that happens. You know, you're going to think, oh, I'm just going to take over. But he says right here, he says in verse four in chapter three, yea, and what will ye, ye to do with me, O Tyre and Sidon and all the coast of Philist Palestine? Will ye render me a recompense? And if ye recompense me swiftly and speedily, Will I return your recompense upon your own head <laughs> before you can catch your breath, <laughs> before you can do anything about it? It's coming. <laughs> and he's, these are like promises. God's making promises. His words are true and faithful. So they're like promises. When, when God says something, that's it. You know, you can take it to the bank, as they say. And as always, I know I'm really wound up. I can't help it. This is, we're getting short of time. We have to keep pressing forward as much as possible and, and understand what's happening and that the things that are happening are the fulfillment of God's will on the wicked. Okay? All right. And as always... I love you.